name is Janie Ho. I'm an illustrator, designer, and a comic artist. Um, I went to school in New York at Parkes School of Design. Originally, I wanted to be a fashion designer. And uh, that's, um, I was told when I was 18 that that was the school to go to. So I went to school and I hated it. I hated fashion design so much. Um, so somebody said, hey, how about, you know, I think you would be a good illustrator. You should major in illustration. I've never heard of illustration before as a major, but I took the leap of, leap of faith and I majored in illustration. So I graduated with a bachelor's degree, but the first job I got out of school was in fashion. <laughs> so it was like a curse or something. Um, I, I went into children's wear. I did um, artwork for t-shirts and like prints for dresses and appliques. Um, I did that for eight months, and I absolutely hated it. So it kind of you know reinforced the idea. I did not, me and fashion did not mix. So I was really lucky I got a job in publishing. I got a job at Nickelodeon Magazine, which was so wonderful. I was there as a graphic designer. And so I, that was my start in the publishing industry, which was great because I got to know about how the ins and outs of publishing worked. Uh, after that, I left to go to Scholastic Book Clubs. I don't know if any of you know about book clubs. Probably in the classrooms, you get the mail or uh, the little flyer. and. So I was exposed to a lot of children's books there. And I also designed all the little stuff for classrooms that you get free with your order, like the bookmarks, the posters, the stickers. So I was really immersed in um, children's work then. And then I left there to go work at Time Magazine for Kids, which is a weekly magazine. I don't know if anybody know that Time Magazine actually had a kids uh, edition, but the kids edition is only available in the classroom. So. That was fun, but during this whole time, uh, I wanted to go back into illustration, and so I was building up my portfolio and wanted to kind of just leave the, you know, the day the day job, so to speak, and uh, go out on my own. So yeah, so five years ago, um, I quit uh, my job and became a full-time freelance illustrator. So this is my website. My website is chickengirldesign.com. Um, it's also janieho.com, both goes into the same site. So a lot of frequently asked question is, why am I named Chicken Girl? So the short answer is that um, I like chickens a lot. People started calling me Chicken Girl, Chicken Girl. I just can't kind of answer to Chicken Girl. And then at that time, I wanted to get a website, and I didn't want to just be boring and have my own name. I wanted something different, something catchy, and people were already calling me Chicken Girl. So I decided, okay, Chicken Girl Design. I think I wanted maybe Chicken Girl Studio, and that was taken. Chicken Girl Design <laughs> was taken, so that's why it's Chicken Girl Design. I feel like that encompasses like design, art, illustration. You are one of many Chicken Girls. <laughs> yeah. And um, another question is, do you eat chicken? A lot of people ask me, and I, I do eat chicken. <laughs> I'm not a vegetarian. I always say, don't tell the chicken. <laughs> so these are some of the books I've illustrated. I'll have them up there, too. Um, I work with different publishers. Um, I don't write these books. I, I get a manuscript from the publisher. And then I put my spin, my interpretation of the story. So yeah, these are just the different books. I also, besides books, books is my first love, but other books, other stuff that I do is I do um, artwork for toys, for puzzles. Um, I've done an iPhone app. I've done gift cards. So kind of like my artwork fits into other applications too, but it's usually always for kids. So just a little note on how I work. This sketch, uh, this is a spread from the Haunted Ghoul Bus, which is down there. Um, I usually like to hand sketch my artwork first using pencil and paper, just hand do. But I also work digitally. My final art is all on the computer. So I use, uh, my favorite is Adobe Illustrator, and I draw on top of my artwork. I scan, so obviously I scan my sketches in, and I put it as a layer in Adobe Illustrator. I draw on top of my sketch, but you know, finesse it up. 
90% in the pen tool, if anybody knows Illustrator. And then this is the final level. I put kind of textures in, shadows, all that. So that's a spread from the Hans Kupas. So there was a trend in the, in, in the children's book industry maybe about a couple years ago on um, graphic novels in the children's in children's publishing. There, it was like a big trend. It was like um, a lot of children's illustrators were being asked, oh, this is the latest thing. You've got to have uh, sequential art, comic art into your portfolio because you're going to get work this way. Well, I didn't really do that, but there was a lot of gigs that came in that was um, kind of graphic novel-esque. So I did these two books called, they're my first graphic novels. They're really simple. They're obviously for very young kids. I don't know that age group, maybe two to, not two, but maybe four to six years old? I don't know. So they're very young. Obviously, the panels here in the spread from one of the books, it's just four panels. It's very simple. When I got the manuscript, I also got the layout, so I didn't have to lay out anything. They were literally like panel one, I want the, you know, I want girl going up the steps. So I, you know, panel two, girl going to push in through the gym door. So it's very easy, it was very simple, I just had to do what they asked, I didn't have to lay everything out. But one thing I did learn from this experience is that um, graphic novels are a lot more work actually <laughs> than picture books, so I give props to all the comic artists out there. Because each panel just seems like, you know, it's its own little piece of work. So. For me to even just something as simple as this, it was I felt like it was a lot more work than just kind of considering a picture book with just one spread. So that's what I've learned. Um, well, this is something else. Uh, but I actually wanted to talk about the similarities of picture books and uh, graphic novels. Is that well, obviously you have to draw the same character over and over again, which in children's books is. You know, it's very important, obviously. You can't change the way it looks when on the next page. The kids need to recognize this specific character over and over and over. And I guess in, you know, in graphic novels, you have to draw the same thing over and over. Some of the differences, I feel like, is that in graphic novels, it's more you can control the time and the pacing with um, how many, however many panels you want um, on a page versus... In picture books, it's very even. It's all one, one spread after another. It's, you can't control the timing as much. So, But anyway, uh, something to do, some stuff, that, comic stuff I do on my own um, while I was um, working in just a staff job in publishing. I started to take a, a lot of classes. When I was in New York, I took a, a, a comics class at School of Visual Arts, just a continuing ed class, and I just decided to uh, I write my own comics. Let's give it a try. Um, so, I, so I'm chicken girl, so I decided, well, obviously, let's do a character with a girl and a chicken. And this is what I did, um, ended up doing. I guess it's kind of semi-autobiographical. You know, that's me, that's my imaginary chicken friend, so. I did this um, just using pen and ink, and then I um, scanned it and colored it in Photoshop. So it's a little bit different than what I'm used to doing in Illustrator for my professional work. So this is some of the spreads that are in this comic. It's, I think it's about roughly six, seven pages. It's kind of short, and I printed them. They're kind of like just tiny little books. So it's just about me just being a roommate with a chicken, and Things happen. This is one of the last later uh, spreads. Just um, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. It was. It's more like I. I since I wasn't a, feel like I wasn't a great writer, I actually kept it pretty silent. It wasn't. There wasn't any much text to it. But just you know, it's always happily ever after in the end. Yeah. Chicken. So, my favorite is probably the, the chicken in the shower. In the shower. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so this is uh, so this is one of like the first comics that was like really complete that I did that was colored and everything. So this is 
the start of my chicken empire comics, I guess. But. <laughs> So this is the second one I did, probably years later. I started to meet with a comp uh, couple of comic artists in uh, coffee shops, I guess similar to this forum um, like in New York. And I, I wanted to continue with drawing chickens, exploring the chicken theme, but this time around I just decided, you know, just draw myself as a chicken mm -hmm. and just forget the people, because I actually don't like drawing people that much. I actually like drawing a lot of animals, and a lot of my um, books usually I get called for drawing like you know anthropomorphic animals. So, um, so this is called Abe the Burping Rooster. Um, it's actually it's actually based in uh, something real. Uh, my boyfriend, and at the time was my husband now, burped a lot. He <laughs> hated the burping, and I guess this was a way for me to kind of reconcile with the idea that he was just gonna keep burping. So I, I changed his name, his name's not Abe, but I obviously made him a rooster, He's, you know, and um, so this is a couple pages also, actually a little bit more, maybe 12 uh, pages on Abe the Burping Rooster. Um, and it actually ended up being in the Friends of Lulu, uh, the Girl's Guide to Guy Stuff, which I have a copy of over there on the table if anybody wants to look at it. So it's an anthology. Um, Friends of Lulu is actually uh, an organization to promote kind of comic artists, uh, mainly women comic artists in the industry. So this was all women um, artists in the book. And they, and they had a theme, and actually I did this you know, before they had this open submission. And when I heard about this, it was like, oh, perfect. You know, I've been talking about guys burping, so I'll just submit that. And so, yeah. So I guess I'm here to really talk about If You Lived Here, which is a comic story I did. And um, this is the cover. Um, actually, I, I used like little white acrylic. You can get Myers. It's like nothing fancy. It was just something I did for the cover quickly. Um, I did it in, with, in part of the sketchbook project, which um, I can explain what that is. It's, um, this organization called Art House Co-op, which is with the Brooklyn Art Library, uh, you, you can pay $25, you pay $25 to them and they send you a book like similar, like this, like a notebook, sketchbook, they call it a sketchbook, but the paper were really thin, so I call it, it's more like a notebook. It's about five and a half by eight and a half, something like that. And you pay $25, they send you a book. So a lot of people, anybody can participate, can sign up. This was back in, last summer, last August, and um, so the idea is that then everybody can work on the same, using the same kind of, same notebook, same sketchbook. You can fill it in whatever you want, and then you're going to send it back. The deadline was in January, so I don't have this book with me uh, because I sent it back, but you send it back. It's part of the Brooklyn um, Art Library collection, which is, you know, amazing. There's like a little barcode on the back. It has your name, and people can check it out, um, like, a, like it's a, li like a library. It's also going on tour, that's why it says it's a concert tour, but with sketchbooks. It's, um, they're taking the whole collection, whoever mails it back. Um, it's going all over the country this year, starting in March. So it's going to like major cities like Chicago, and Portland, San Francisco, and places in Texas, I think in Austin too. So it's kind of neat, you know, you get, you know that your, your little book that you kind of had your sketches in is going all over the place and people get to see it. So, that was a huge motivation for me to, you know, somebody gave me a deadline, you know, I had to send it back in January, so what am I going to fill it with? Well, there were themes that was, uh, you can choose a theme. Um, they had like just various themes that already existed. So there was one something called, if you live here, lived here. So I thought, well, I, I moved to Ann Arbor about a year and a half ago, and I thought, well, there's all these new environments, you know, new coffee shops, new Places. Maybe I'll just take the sketchbook and just sketch my new environment, you know, because I was always working in coffee shops and stuff. So, like, okay. So I got the book and it sat there for quite a while. I was like, okay. But at the same time, I think Jersey was having the, the comics uh, fundamentals workshop at the library here. Well, not here, but in the branch. So, um, and I remember thinking, for that particular workshop, I didn't even link those two together. I was just like, well, you know what? 
I'm a picture book illustrator. I have tons of picture book ideas. I, I haven't written my own picture book. I thought, I'm just going to take those ideas and, and make it as a comic, make it as a comic book. So I tried and tried. It didn't really work. But I, I remember talking to Jersey, and he was, telling, he was asking me, well, you know, what are some of the things that you can, you know, say to your friends, like, wow, you, don't, you can't believe this is what happened to me. And, and it kind of clicked for me. I was like, well, you know, back home with my friends in New York, I was just, just telling them all types of stuff that was going on in Ann Arbor, these new experiences, these cultural, you know, differences, you know, from being in New York and Ann Arbor. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to write a story about, you know, me being in Ar Ann Arbor and all the, you know, new things that was happening. So that's what I did. This is one of the first uh, pages that I did. Um, I just used a ballpoint pen. pen. I, I, I didn't have a storyline in mind. I already had tons of story ideas and you know, tons of stories in my head. So I didn't really, I didn't really think about it too much. I just kind of started. So this was the first spread ballpoint pen. Very obviously very scratchy and loose, but it was very quick. It was just the story was just flowing out of me. So. Yeah, I mean, and I've drawn, and obviously I've drawn myself as a chicken before. It was, it was the perfect thing. My, you know, my husband's a rooster, so, <laughs> and so on it goes. Um, so this is my blog. This is uh, chickengirldesign.blogspot.com. So I decided to put up um, what I did. I did about seven pages before I put it up. Um, yeah. And I, the response I got was amazing. I just couldn't believe everybody, you know, was just so supportive. I mean, it, there was some really personal stuff there. I've never, I'm a pretty shy and private person. I, I didn't, you know, it, so the, the story was very personal. The thing was that drawing myself as a chicken and drawing my husband as a chicken, it kind of feels like a step back, like, oh, that's not me. I'm just not drawing me, although it is a personal story, so I can, kind of feel like I can tell more personal stuff, but step away from it also at the same time. But I put it up on my blog, and I got a great response, so that really pushed me along to keep going with posting. Um, so as I was doing the work, I, I wanted, I guess, a little bit better than ballpoint pen. I started using microns. It was like, wow, I, I mean, I haven't really been to an art store in quite a while because all my work is pretty digital. I usually just use whatever pencils and I have specific paper I like to use, but other than that, I haven't really explored art supplies in a while. So it was kind of nice to kind of just draw by hand. And so I started using microns a little bit um, to get a better, better line. Also, I started, on my blog, I also decided that I was going to post, um, I guess, weekly. I guess it was Denver that, uh, talk here at the Comic Artist Forum, you know, he mentioned about his comic and, you know, having a schedule and really posting it up, you know, every week. And I thought that was a great idea. I mean, if you want to get a following of people, they should, ex they should know when, they, like, what day or when you're going to post so they can come back and check it out, like, what is, if you have a continuous story like this. And so I decided to, uh, I picked a Tuesday. I decided, so I'm starting to post every Tuesday and there were people kind of just, you know, started to tell me, I'm looking forward to Tuesday, you know, I want to see what's going on. So, so that was great. So the little people come back for it, expecting it. It pushed me also to continue posting. And the, the sketchbook was 80 pages, so I decided, I, oh, I need to send it back in January. I divided up all the pages. I was doing like two, uh, two spreads a week. I only missed one, so from August to January, I only missed one week, because that was Thanksgiving. <laughs> and I had a book deadline due, so that was definitely more important. I had to get that out, so, so that was it. Um, so the different subject matters in this story, um, my poor husband is kind of like a subject. Uh, he is like a New Yorker born bred, so he's never, he's you know grown adult and doesn't have his driver's license. He doesn't know how to drive. Um, you know, it's always the subways and the buses in New York. So that was like a huge thing for me because even though I had my driver's license, I, I, didn't, I don't like driving. So it was really important for him to get his driver's license as soon as possible. So that was like a big ordeal. And so I wrote about that um, here. So that was one of the um, issues. And, 
Another thing was um, about the friendliness in the Midwest. I wasn't used to everybody being really nice to me. Because <laughs> even in New York, everybody, you know, I guess, I never thought New Yorkers were rude, but I guess, I think after I moved here, I, I was like, oh, maybe the New Yorkers are a little bit rude. Because um, in supermarkets, like, you know, the cashier saying, did you find everything you're looking for? I mean, that never happens in New York. I guarantee that does not exist. If they say hi to you, that's already <laughs> a big thing. So I wrote about that. Um, that was one of the things I noticed. So I was just writing about things I wish, just a little differences, even just subtle stuff like this. And that's actually the other side of just how my experiences in New York is in comparison. Um, they say hi to you, that's already like a big thing, so. <laughs> and this, um, <laughs> this is a big thing with me too, because um, Ann Arbor is definitely a lot colder than New York, and I was like, this whole thing about a puffy coat, I, 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 refused to, I refused for a while to buy a puffy coat. It was a big deal for me. So, but it was getting really cold. And when we first moved to August, you know, we were like buying snow boots in August because, you know, we were like, you know, fearful like of snow and the cold. And then I finally broke down and bought a puffy coat so that I wrote about that. And we were snuggies so many times. We have four snuggies now. Our, our family <laughs> bought, like, you know, my brother bought us two. And I think, um, yeah. And we're on top of each other. Oh yeah, in layer, right? <laughs> so yeah, we have four. Got snuggies. Um, so yeah, so if you wanna if that interests you and you want to read the whole story, um, it's all eighty one pages is on my Flickr site. It's um my username is Chicken Girl Design. You can just look me up on Flickr and then you'll see my sketchbook project two thousand eleven set. Um, it'll be all there. So if you're interested. Okay. So you do like has a little flicker kind of click through. It has a little next page. So that's yeah, like a, yeah. That's a way to do a sort of cartoon gallery as long as you're doing it next page or whatever. I did. It's all. That's, it should okay. be all like um, in sequence. So I see a picture of what it looks like in Flickr. Oh one yeah. Of the pages. I'm just kind of curious to see that. Okay, I can show you. I'll show you what up. Is it Flickr or is that just the it's image? It's Oh, this is it, but I don't, this is not on. A screen grab. Okay. Yeah, it's a screen grab. Okay, so, oh, I'm sorry. But I, oh, no, but I, I can show you. I it just looks like it's the flicker thing, so I thought. Yeah, it's a screen grab. Oh, anyway. But, yeah. I'll check it another time, don't worry about it. Huh? Oh, please, if you please take a look. Um, so, I guess in conclusion, I've learned that um, one thing is that I'm finally a storyteller, because I was struggling so much with um, doing picture books that I really wanted to write, really wanted to write my own picture book, and it just didn't happen. So, but if I was telling a personal story, it just, you know, it just came out of me, so it was amazing. And um, also, uh, I get a lot, I get a lot of, it was great because, you know, I was struggling a little bit about, you know, moving to a new town and just, you know, making friends, a lot of things like making friends and just like adjusting to the culture. And a lot of, I got so much great feedback, you know, people were like, you know, I know how you feel, I've moved, you know, from here to here, and it's like such an adjustment. And, I mean, there was also a point where I think people were feeling sorry for me a little bit. I was like, oh, I, you know, I didn't want to be, you know, people feel sorry for me, definitely. You know, I'm at a good place. But it, it is nice to kind of get that feedback, you know, just to, it was very comforting. It was, it was comforting and it was, you know, just like kind of validated, like about my feelings. It's not weird. And on the last note, a lot of people tell me that, um, because I wrote in my description of what this book is about, is that I'm writing, drawing about my experiences of moving from a big city in New York to a small college town, Ann Arbor, Michigan. And a lot of just people just tell me, Ann Arbor is not a small town, it's not a small town, you know, but, you know, it's all relative, so. I, I know there are probably smaller towns in Ann Arbor, but, you know, for me, coming from New York City, it was like a little, you know, definitely an adjustment, so. But, yeah, that's it, so. Thank you very much, and I hope this inspired you as this comic form inspired me. I mean, I don't know if anybody has any questions. I can do a drawing demo, but then I was thinking, actually, that I can answer any questions anybody have about publishing. Oh, well, it's just about the, your autobiographical story. Was it 
Because um, I've done stuff like that before, but I was wondering, was there any kind of negotiation with your husband of what couldn't really go yeah. on? Because we had that conversation too, like, oh yeah, you're writing about my Kelly White, but like, we definitely talked about stuff we didn't want to have in there, or, well, at least my, my girlfriend didn't want to have in there. So was there any conversation with that before you started, or as you were going, saying, I don't want you to talk about our bedroom life, let's go say that. <laughs> Or, or whatever, you know, or anything, was there any conversation about what not to put in there as a censorship I, of your story? Yeah, well, first of all, I'm, I'm already a pretty private person in general, okay. so I, I think I've already kind of censored like a lot of stuff. But I did, as I was going along, because I was doing maybe about two spreads a week, I just, I just every time I did stuff, I, I did show it to him. And he okay. was kind of, you know, yeah, he is involved in this. So he did kind of look and say, you know, is this okay? But he never really had a problem with it. So, I mean, we would joke around, and I'd be like, and I said something like, you know, I'll kill you off in the next, you know, chapter. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but he was fine. He was fine. And, you know, I'm, I'm pretty private, so I, I, I was already kind of censoring myself a little bit. So, yeah. Uh, one interesting thing that, to me, about this as a comic project was that you had, a, obviously, a sketchbook or notebook that, with the predetermined page pages in there. Mm -hmm. uh, so I know as, I'm an artist who like fusses over things and scraps things and redoes things. But you didn't have that option with the sketchbook. Do you think that was good or bad in terms of mentally okay. and in terms of the process? Well, it was so good because in the beginning, I would you know I definitely wanted the perfect art, and I knew I was going to post on my blog, and I was like, oh, this is not exactly the best artwork. But then actually, somebody told me. It is called the sketchbook project, so just think of it as sketches. It doesn't need to be perfect, and that helped so much. That did not. I mean, I was cranking out two spreads a week. I mean, I think if I was fussing over the art a lot, I would not even have gotten you know one panel. So just the fact that it was named sketchbook project, it actually helped me. So I was trying to you know let go of like pretty art versus just trying to tell the story. I love your chicken and it, the way that it emotes, it, you know, how do you get chickens to emote uh, feelings oh, and stuff? Maybe I should do the drawing now because I was going to draw the chickens and just the different ways of um, yeah, like expressing them. Let's see how it works. 